morning, folks. Aaron here from Bean Sprout. Um, we are just getting packed up for our trip to Hawaii. Uh, we leave um, tonight, actually. We're going to be there for two weeks. And uh, the main reason we're going is because I got a grant from the Mortison Tenon Magazine to study um, musical instruments made in the 1880s um, to kind of, uh, you know, learn about how they were made, what materials they were used, and what hand tools were used to make those instruments. So, um, you know, these 1880s and 1890s instruments are the real first generation of musical instruments made in Hawaii that people called ukulele. So um, I thought I would just show some of the tools I have set up for um, examining and measuring these instruments. I thought you'd think it's fun to see my toolkit for this. So to begin with, the two places I'm going where I'm going to um, see these instruments is one is the Bishop Museum, and I have an appointment with the Ethnology Department where they'll be bringing me instruments to look at. And they are fine with me measuring and, uh, you know, measuring and studying these instruments, although they want me to share my information with the museum, which is fine. You know, they belong to the museum, not to me. If so anything I learn is their information, I'm happy to share that. So I'll need to write these up afterwards, which I've never done before, but I have some people I can ask about how to do it. And then the other place I'm going to be seeing some old instruments is with, my, with uh, Sean from the website Ukulele Friend. And Sean is a collector of uh, these instruments, and he has instruments made by all three of the original builders. Now, since those instruments are Sean, um, you know, the measurements or tracings or anything I do, they belong to him. Um, and so we'll work out later on um, what that means for my, my scholarship. Um, and that's just the line you walk when you are studying things that don't belong to you. Um, these are not mine. Uh, they belong to other people and to, uh, you know, more globally the Hawaiian people and so I'm just here to learn what I can. So uh, philosophy wise I think if you asked me five or ten years ago what the point of doing this was I would think I would want to like really measure things like oh I wonder how thin the top is I wonder what size the fretboard is oh how thick is that binding and I've done this for so long now that those things are not as important. I think most of that stuff is just apparent to my eye and my hand in a way that doesn't need massive, you know, microscopic measurement. I think I'm more interested now in the vibe of it all, in the spirit of the person who created the instrument, you know, like the spirit of the person who picked up the tool to do that job. You know, so I'm looking for tool marks. I'm looking for signs of repair. I'm looking for artistic decisions made you know, is that a fair curve? Is that a straight arc? You know, just the stuff that is not so measurable and just the overall vibe of each builder. Um, specifically, I'm really most interested in uh, the builder with the last name Santo. Um, and I think in Portuguese it actually might be Santu. I'm still confused on that, sorry. Um, but his instruments, um, I just like how they look and I'm excited mostly to study them. Anyway, that's a lot of talk. Let's get the tools out. Okay, so let's get started. Um, to begin with, the most important tool is the one that's right up there, and that's just my iPhone. Having photos and videos of things are really the most helpful, because I can always go back and look at them later. It's a thing that just wasn't available for. So for my tool roll, I actually picked my newest tool roll, tool roll so it's the least dirty, because I don't want to walk into someone place, someone's place and have really dirty stuff. I feel like it looks bad. So Nicole got me this from Lost Art Press for Christmas, so it's my little tool roll. So first I have a rule. Uh, this is my anchor rule, and it's uh, 30 seconds and 60 fourths, and it's, it's a nice, flexible, accurate rule. All these metal things, I, I scraped off any paint or anything, and then I wiped them down with naphtha to get rid of grease and dirt, because I don't want to get things dirty. So anyway, uh, for measuring, I have my, a smaller stare at rule, which is probably what I'll use more often if I need to measure. I've got uh, a set of calipers, and... Um, these are handy ones because it's got uh, thousands of an inch on the inside, which is how luthiers often think. And then it's got bigger measurements as they go, and then it's got a rule on the scale. So um, I was gonna bring my one that's only thousands all the way around, but I think this will be fine. Um, and then, uh, not for measuring, but for marking shapes and etc. I have a little bevel that I can um, uh, measure an angle with and then lock it off and then I can trace it on a piece of paper, some kind of a sliding bevel. And then these two are similar, so if for whatever reason I don't want to put my measuring equipment on the instrument or it's not appropriate to, I have a set of dividers and a set of outside shaped calipers where I can like dial up to what the measurement is and then I can go over to my rule 
and um, set the measurement that way. So for the nerds out there, I've got brown and sharp, and I think these little guys are actually Sterrets. Lufkins, sorry. There you go, tool nerds. Okay, um, so normal pencils like you would normally see, but then I have probably the most important pencil. This is a pencil cut in half. And what this is for is for, um, for tracing. Although other pencils can be good for tracing, what's good about the pencil cut in half is that it does ride around a shape better. Compared to trying to hold the point of a pencil like this, a normal one, the flat one works great. Um, and before we go on, I should mention the blue tape. I am perfectly prepared and willing for the fact that somebody might not want any of this to touch an instrument. But they might be okay with it if, it's if the surface that's touching is covered in blue tape. So for instance, I might put a layer of blue tape on the inside of a set of calipers then re-zero them out into my measurements that way. It's just less likely to hurt something, and I'm fine with that. So I could even put the tape on this um, pencil for tracing. I'm really hoping I can get a tracing or two of body shapes of the really small instruments. So and for that, I've also got some tracing paper. I've got regular paper too packed. Um, so I have a brand new pair of gloves that I haven't worn before. They're kind of, I got them from Stu Mac actually. Um, but they're kind of for this exact thing, inspection and handling of expensive items. And I'm keeping them in the plastic so I can prove to people I'm not dirty. Um, then I have my normal LED light, which I would use to look inside of things. Um, and then I have my dental mirror. So between these two things, this is how I normally work on the inside of musical instruments. And I'm hoping if I need to look inside, I can use these. I'm really hoping to use these for tool marks. I want to look inside and see tool marks. Um, and then I have a cloth tape measure, just in case. I'm not sure I'm gonna use that. It's also just not as accurate as my other things, but it's a backup. And then I got a new thing from Stumac. It's an LED light that has a USB, and then you have a special cable like this. And so it's got, I got like a long cord so I can plug it into a wall, and then I can put this down inside an instrument or hold it over an instrument. So this is a better light than this one, um, but this one might be too obtrusive for certain things. Is that it? That's it. Um, so everything's been wiped off and cleaned as best I could. Um, and whoever owns these instruments gets final say about what I use and what you know data I collect. I need to write things down in a notebook, of course. Um, but I'm just looking forward to it. Hopefully I can get a few little markings and measurings that'll be helpful to my future builds or for the study of these important historical instruments. Okay, cheers.